Warning, you are listening to an adult podcast talking about adult topics. You have definitely been warned. All right, everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Hoppy Craftsman. I'm Chris, with me is Brandon, and our special guest, I'm Corey, a bar manager here at Mellon Mushroom in Ahwatukee. Nice. So here at Mellon Mushroom, they said. Right, so we're actually... On location at Mellow Mushroom in Ahwatukee, guys. It's a first. <laughs> <laughs> Last weekend, we had our first guest, and this week, we're on our first on-site location. So, cheers to that, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, definitely. Nice. So, Corey, what is uh, your job as a bar manager here at Mellow Mushroom? Um, so, I'm in charge of all the beer buying. That's my favorite part of the job, for sure. You know, I have 47 different rotating handles here, so... Get to do all the craft beer. It's all all craft on tap. So, you know, working towards allocations and things like that with different breweries is one of the main things. So you can get all their fun and cool stuff like, you know, Bell's Hop Slam and different different uh, different stuff that comes out. All the good know, seasonals. Yeah, exactly. BCS we just had on not too long ago. Bourbon County Stout from Goose Island. Mm, so, very nice. Um, had a bottle the other night. 2015 is pretty delicious. <laughs> 2015, 14 is my favorite right now. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you know, I get to bartend also, so that's part of the fun, fun part of the job. I uh, still get to interact with the guests and yeah. things, so I still see both sides of of the job. So you get, know, get to sling the beer, get to tell people what to try, exactly, and everything see like what that. people are liking, and yeah. you know that Ob- kind of stuff. Obviously, so. you drink the beer that you suggest. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you got to quality control and stuff. You got to <laughs> taste the taste the beer, make sure it's coming out all right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes. And we are currently tasting some of those beers here. Uh, you were talking about the beer that you're currently having right now, which uh, is uh, it's the Ska Rudy. It's a session IPA from Ska Brewing out of uh, Durango, Colorado. Just uh, awesome. Still got some good hop to it but lower alcohol so you can drink a few of them Mm -hmm. nice and crushable it's uh, finishes pretty clean it's it's good it's all about those session ipas even during the winter time you know i'm actually never had the rudy we talked about this before the show i I haven't had the rudy before uh how does it compare to like you know a founders all day or something like that is it um i feel i feel founders all day is a little bit more crushable you get a little bit more of the hop flavor a little bit more bite out of the, the rudy but that's what i like that's right, you know right. i mean a session to me usually is around six percent honestly <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. Not, you know four or five is a little less than a normal ipa yes. yeah <laughs> right right good stuff man so that so you get to actually work with the vendors to figure out what beers you want i mean is that yeah, so um, so every Monday is when uh, all the different vendors come in and see me. Um, they sample me on new beers and uh, all the stuff that's coming out. And I talk to people from, you know, there's the distribution side of it where they they actually sell the beer. And then you have the suppliers, the breweries, and then the reps that come in from them mm-hmm. um, to, you know, promote their brewery. Mondays are a fun day for me. Sometimes <laughs> I get like three or four different breweries, uh, reps that come in and, uh, sample me on, you know, four or five different beers that day. So That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. So, you know, some of the things that, you know, I get to try things before they're actually on the shelves a lot of times too. So yeah. like all the new Belgium's new, new line that they're coming out with, I, I got to sample a few of those and, Excellent. um, yeah, just get to hear it from from the horse's mouth, but basically, right? Yeah, and is that just this location, or do all the mellow mushrooms, uh, you know, go through the same process? Uh, yeah, so each one has their own bar manager, and they kind of operate autonomously. We, they, we get to do all our own things, and well, we got a lot of good people at every restaurant that are into craft beer and do mm-hmm. some cool stuff. So yeah. uh, Jenna over at Stapley in the sixty. She's awesome. She always has big, just crazy beers on tap, like just a lot of awesome, yeah. expensive stuff. You they know? recently just had KBS on tap. I yeah. Think. Right. yeah. <laughs> um, and then Joe over at City North does a pretty good job. That's where I got to. He set up a meeting with Sam Caglio, Caligioni. Caligioni. Oh, yeah. Caligioni. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> owner and founder of Dogfish. So that was really cool. Uh, because we're all like big supporters of Dogfish, so oh, yeah, yeah. there's certain breweries that we all agree on and we all you know push for to keep them happy, which keeps keeps us happy. You know, give mm-hmm. us all the cool allocations and things like that. Yeah, that's the next question. Is you guys, do you guys actually? Because I know you're active on the Arizona Craft, mm-hmm. you know, beer lovers on Facebook, oh, yeah. and then. I mean, is that something you guys, you, you sit down and actually meet with each other or a conference call? Not, and, and, not and really. Talk? Sometimes we do. Uh, uh, we text. You know, we have a group text that uh, we get 
a hold of each other that way. But honestly, we just all kind of do our own thing. We're all mm-hmm. we're all pretty good at it. So we you know we all know what's coming out. But right. definitely that uh, Arizona craft beer lovers on um, Facebook is a, a good way to know what's coming out and what's right. who where where it's hitting the shelves and things like that. So absolutely, yeah. so definitely follow that. So you mentioned you met Sam. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. We, got, we can't really glaze over oh, that, right? We need to go, kind of go oh, back man. to that. It was, it was, uh, it's like me and a rock star in the beer world, man. I was uh, geeking out. <laughs> I, you know, was, you know, I almost wore one of my dogfish shirts, but like from PCU, <laughs> yeah. don't wear the shirt of the band that you go to, uh, you're going to see. You know, <laughs> like so, be, I didn't want to be that guy. You yeah, know? Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> so, don't be that guy. so, but I did bring a, a couple bottles of 120, and then their uh, higher math, which was their anniversary beer, mm-hmm. for him to sign. And yeah, you know, sweet. I was like, I was like, am I going to be the a weird guy asking him to sign something? But <laughs> I mean, he gets it all the time. He has his own pen and stuff. That yeah. Yeah, it's own like- special color and yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> j- just super down to earth, really, really awesome, easily approachable guy. Like we sat and talked about beer. Like, so the whole, the whole purpose of the meeting was like, it was almost like a sales meeting. You know, he's talking about the new beers coming out and where he came from and, you know, just the different beers they do and their whole right. core concept of, of off centered ales and things like that. So, but before and after we got to s- sit down with them and we're all walking around and, you know, I talked beer with them for like 45 minutes and what he, what he thinks the best age is for 120 and, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, just different things like that. It, it was just awesome. It was really cool. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Just easily, easy to talk to a guy. Like right. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever seen like his videos on Facebook, like it, that's exactly who he is in person. Like yeah. he's, yeah, I liked I liked when they uh, had that series on uh, Discovery Channel. Yep, and yeah. uh, you know he the one the beer they were making they had he had all his employees chew on the maize. Like each of them got like a five gallon bucket of maize that they had to chew on and spit out that they were actually going to add to the mash to the you know production of the of that particular beer. I don't even remember. Uh, it's chicha, chicha, chicha. That's beer. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember. That. I love that. It was it was great? Yeah. It was and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's. It's really cool to see somebody like that. Because, I mean, you also get the thing where, and this is my thing, is I don't really ever want to meet anybody that I really like a lot because I'm just worried that that, like, veil is going to, like, yeah. you know, it's going to drop and they're going to be, like, the biggest dickhead. Yeah, exactly. Or they're going to be rude or it's not, like, you know, be like, you don't really know anything or, or whatever. It's going to be just really off-putting to meet that person and shatter that dream of Yeah, exactly. Cool you shatter your image of them, yeah. <laughs> right. And so, it, it's, you know, that's really cool that he's, he's that kind of down-to-earth guy and that he's actually really to talk to you about stuff. So. Yeah, and it was cool to hear uh, where he came from and his his whole, like, concept of what he does with his beer. Like, uh, uh, I forget the name of the German purity law, the rise and gun bolt or something, yeah, something, yeah, something to that like effect. That, yeah. The German purity law right. where you can only do water, barley, and hops. Yep. Um, his whole idea was to go against that and, like, add, like, a culinary aspect in beer. Which I, I love that like, that's part of the reason I got into beer in the first place was to, uh, because I saw the art in it, you know, I love right. food and different flavors and like, and, you know, bringing that into beer was just, you know, really cool. Like fresh ingredients, you know, locally sourced, you know, fruits and spices and mm-hmm. adding it and blending the flavors of hops and, you right. know, <laughs> making it into something beautiful to drink, you know? Yeah. Like so, we were talking about last week or, you know, last show with the, uh, the wilderness guys, how they're right. keeping it local with all the fresh ingredients that they use for their, their beers. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a fun time to be in if you like beer. Yeah, it really Definitely. is. <laughs> I'm so, going to start marking things that you say off my list of questions to ask you because at this point you've mastered, you know, a lot of fun. <laughs> it's cool. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine because we can talk, we can talk more, more beer that way. It's <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what else I have in there? Oh, so what actually got, I mean, that's, that's what got you into craft beer was those things you liked, right? So. Uh, yeah. So I originally started with a uh, rock bottom brewery when I started working with beer, um, which uh, the desert Ridge location. Right. Oh, uh, Oh, this actually used to be a rock this bottom. This used to be yeah. a rock bottom as well. That <laughs> uh, room right now. Yeah, so it's kind of funny that I left rock bottom and worked for Mellow Mushroom, and now working in a restaurant that used to be a rock bottom for Mellow Mushroom. Like, <laughs> evidently, you made a really good circular. choice. Like, and, it's all and, circular. Right? Yeah, uh, but uh, the brewer um, that was working there at the time, his name is Brian Helton. He was just awesome, awesome with beer. He did some amazing things, and uh, one of the things was uh, he barrel aged his milk stout that he got a lot of awards for, and did it in three different barrels. So every year he would bust open the barrel and uh, put it on tap. And by the first time I had it was his third one. So it was three years aged in that bourbon barrel and Oof, yeah. came to find out that it was 
too high in alcohol to even have on tap. So <laughs> <laughs> we had to take it off and it was just like a tap without a handle that only like this people in the know could drink, you know, but just awesome stuff. Uh, I got to work, uh, strong beer fest with, uh, with him, um, pouring beers. And that was one of the beers that he brought. And then, you know, he just taught me all the basics about beer, like, you know, how it's made in the process and different th terms, IBUs, you know, ABV, gotcha. all, all that stuff. I learned all that from him. And then I got to transfer all that base knowledge into craft beer, working for Mellow Mushroom. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, my knowledge working for this place has just expanded, like, exponentially. So yeah. uh, it's just fun, fun stuff, man. Um, and, yeah, just the artistry in beer, man. I love art. I love music. I love the art and food and and it's in beer, you know what I mean? Right. When it's done right, it's just a tickling of the senses that it's just, it's, it's just the, fun, man. The, the craft, the craft yeah, of it craft, is amazing. Exactly. That's, it's, there's, there's definitely said to be something that's like, you know, the craft of everything that people do has kind of been lost somewhere along the line. And they see that people are really that into something that they're bringing that craft and that bringing that level of, uh, you know, artistic, you know, whatever to, to that, whatever thing they're about. So it's really nice that, I mean, that's one of the reasons I like craft beer too. It's the same thing is that, I love people that are really into something and they actually devote and they're very passionate about whatever that is. And people in craft beer are definitely that way. Yeah. And especially like the entrepreneurs, the people that are doing all the new stuff, like uh, going back to talking to Sam, he was the first person to put fruit into an IPA and he, he was telling me like it was the April hop and he brought okay. it to uh, some kind of convention. I, I don't remember what it was. I mean, uh, he's been doing this for 20 years. I was 10 years old at the time. You know what I mean? So it was back when he first started, but it, you know, he brought it, he was super excited about it. And, uh, uh, they basically laughed in his face for it. Like some guy said, fruit doesn't belong in beer, it belongs in salads. And like the whole place like started la laughing and clapping and stuff. So he was just all Ouch. downhearted, but you know, he just kept doing what he thought was right. So, you know, now we see Ballast Point and every, I mean, everybody's doing fruit at IPAs now. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not just made for your uh, <laughs> your cervezas or your freaking Hefeweizens yeah. anymore. It's, yeah, it's pretty right. much invaded every aspect of beer at this point. And you know, some of them some of them aren't great, but some of them are just awesome. The way you know right. they blend the flavor of the fruit with the type of hops that they use in it, and, and the way that it just goes together, and it's awesome, man. So some of these are just really good. Some of them, you know, they're just following the trend, and <laughs> and you know, not being trailblazers like the rest of them like you know the good the good ones right. you know right so that being said what is what what brewery or beer do you think people kind of overrate a lot of people are like you've like somebody's always been like oh this beer is amazing and it's the most hyped beer you've ever heard and you tried it and you're like eh, it's all right it's not the best beer in the world i mean most hyped beer i yeah. mean the most common like i feel like beer that people always fall back on is blue moon I right. feel like everybody that thinks they like craft beer drinks Blue Moon. Right. Or thinks that they know what craft beer is drinks Blue Moon. Well, it's, in fact, it's not really craft beer because it's not only my course. Right. Not, <laughs> yeah. not anymore. It's not. But um, I feel like, you know, that's one of the big staple beers. It's like, oh, I, I really like beer. I like I drink Blue Moon, you know, as opposed to like the Bug Lights or, you know, right. it's like that's people, some people's right. upper echelon of good craft beer right and yeah. i think that's a, like a gateway beer for a lot of people sure. i think right it's one of those like oh you can't like this you're gonna like this better like, yeah this definitely I, and i do that behind the bar too it's mm -hmm. like well you should try something else because i always have some kind of wheat beer some kind of cool craft beer from you know some other different brewery mm -hmm. i mean you can always go back to your blue moon if you really want to you know right um as far as me though i mean i, I don't necessarily I don't, i'm not necessarily <laughs> saying these are bad beers uh He's got a full list. This is amazing. Let's do this. I, got, I got a few of them that, you know, like the two that really came to mind first were Kilt Lifter and Fat Tire. Uh, okay. They're not, they're not bad beers. They're, right. they're not like when I first started drinking craft beer, I drank Kilt and Fat Tire all the time. But now that I've seen, seen the light, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't ever, I don't ever go back to those beers. There's so many other different cool beers from, especially from New Belgium, that right. uh, they're always doing those awesome sours or whatever they're doing. The whatever. Looks of Faith series. Yeah, exactly. right. what well, they you. just released their clutch beer, too. Did you see that? Yeah. Which, uh, and cool. Uh, did you, do you know a story behind that beer? A little bit, but not a lot. And so I was just talking to the rep before I got here today. Uh, so five years ago, the, the brewers were out and going to go to a, a clutch concert. And uh, they were out at dinner before they went to the show. 
and they ran into the band and they're like, <laughs> we, we love you guys. We're going to see your show tonight. And the band was like, Oh, well, we love you guys. We love your beer. We drink it all the time. So, uh, uh, later that week or that night, I'm not sure. Uh, but they opened up after, after hours and they all brewed a beer together. So oh, okay. it's actually with the band that that beer was originally brewed, uh, five years ago and this, nice. and they just, Re, redid it redid it again yeah. yeah yeah i knew that they met at a bar somewhere but i didn't know mm -hmm. they actually brewed it together and that's actually pretty cool yeah, yeah um, i did that stuff and i mean i, I love tart of darkness and it's supposed to be like he was like well if you like this you know kind of like that amazon thing you, <laughs> you, if you like this you might also like this you know <laughs> <laughs> um but i'm super excited i got i have a bottle at home that i just haven't had a chance to try yet so uh, but i love clutch and i love new belgian beer and sours and Sour stouts are crazy and complex and so oh, many layers them. of flavor. It's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, the stills, the plum sour stout that yeah. just came out. That's really good. Nice. Sour um, stout, yeah. That's uh, so, it's, it has it's, it's such a contradiction, crazy. but yeah. it's, it tastes amazing. It works. Yeah. It works so good. It's, it's insane. <laughs> what, I, what's yours? I, I, I would say that the... Probably what I hear most people say when they, they, they drink craft beer, or they say something about the drinking craft beer, and I'm always like, yeah, okay is a Guinness to me yeah, oh, is always okay. kind of one of those ones where it's like, I, I understand that the history behind it mm -hmm. and it's probably, you said it's different, right? Cause you've been to the Guinness and it, yeah. I, oh yeah. I've had Guinness straight from the source in Ireland and uh, you know, yeah, it's like one of those things where you, you have to go to Ireland. If you're in Ireland, you have to go to Guinness, you right. know, just to try it there. It tastes different. Yeah. It's the water obviously that makes yeah. it taste different. You know, they try to brew it as, as similar as they can here in the U S but uh, it, it, it tastes different, but right. it's, it's the allure of it being a Guinness from the factory, you For know? Sure. Right. Um, and so it, it could have been lost on me as well, but I've, you know, transferred into loving so many other types of stout beers that, right. you know, Guinness doesn't really, you know, I don't go out of my way to get a Guinness anymore. It, you know? Again, it's a gateway beer, I think, for a lot of people. It's, sure. like, it's a gateway to get into other, like, stouts. And that's what the thing is. As soon as somebody goes, oh, I really like Guinness, it's, you know, it's a really thick, heavy beer. I'm like, uh, hold on a second. You really don't know what you're talking about at this point. Right. You know, somebody's like, oh, it's got a good coffee flavor. And I was like, Wait, what? Mm. <laughs> no, yeah. it doesn't. It's funny. It yeah. has less calories than an uh, Ultra. Right. It's <laughs> actually a light. It's super light. It just looks dark. And right. with the thick head on it from the nitro, it... it it gives the illusion of being a thick, heavy beer, but it's super crushable. Like, if, if it's poured <laughs> off a of nitro. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Most yeah. places don't even pour it off a of nitro, do nor that. do they know how to actually the, pour a full Guinness. The widget. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I never really poured it right either. So uh, <laughs> just, well, you got, it, it's you, not conducive you, to a fast paced bar. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. No, you have to go to Guinness and learn how learn, to pour yeah, the perfect three pour. Three or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, it's just one of those beers where I just, every time somebody says that, it's definitely a beer that I'm like, okay. You're, 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 get the foot in the door. Let's mm. get you into something a little bit better. If I feel like a car salesman actually, a lot of people say this stuff because I'm always like, no, no, no. I can get, I mean, I feel like I'm doing some of your job sometimes. Yeah. Like, no, no, I'm going to get you into something a little nicer. Let's, let's step you up from uh, the Miata to maybe just <laughs> any normal car kind of thing, right? <laughs> any uh, of the just like, a, just like a nice left hand milk stout. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, that's it. I feel like that's a, it's almost, in my book, the same like popularity as far as you know the people that I talk to. I only talk to people that like craft beer a lot of the time, anyway. So <laughs> those are good people to talk to. Though we, we like uh, those people. It, it's so we used to do a thing where with stouts we would actually uh, do a flashlight test. Okay. So our boy always carried a flashlight with them, and so when we got a stout, we'd be like, "Oh, actually, how how dark is this beer?" Mm -hmm. and put a flashlight underneath it and put the glass on top of it. Uh -huh. If you can see through it, it wasn't that dark of a stout. Huh. I've never done that. <laughs> right. Cause nobody ever has a flashlight, yeah. but our buddy always did. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of one of those on the fly. We're like, this should be cool. Let's try this. And sometimes it was like a, basically like a candle. It lit up so bright. It was like, oh, that's actually supposed to be a, a stout. And it's yeah. not. Back and in, then back in the days when we were drinking Elsie's coffee, Irish coffee stout at Papa Go. Yeah. Delicious stuff, man. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are, what are your guys' feelings on Pliny? You know, it's funny because I, I think Pliny, and we talked about it before, is that Pliny's, it, Pliny's good. It really it, is. It's good. It's yeah, good. Sure. It's it's just, I can get it too hard in here, and mm -hmm. I think too hard is just as good as Pliny. And it's one of those things where, just because I think the exclusivity the, of what the Pliny is, of, right, yeah. it's, it, that's, that's why it's, everybody's like, ooh, Exactly. And, that, and that's why I brought it up, because we we're talking about overrated beer. It's, right. it's, it's a fantastic beer, don't get yes. me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a really good IPA, but it's 
just the fact that it's so exclusive. You can only get it in certain places in California and, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm not going to turn down a plane. Right. Yeah, just exactly. put it that way. <laughs> right. well, they're, they're blind pig is almost actually better uh, than I do like it better. I actually wine. really did. And it's probably because I didn't have any, 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 you know, things uh, behind it going into it. You know, I didn't have any hyper build up to it. I just... I was like, oh, here, what's blind pig? Oh, that's delicious. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think I tried a blind pig because I didn't have any Pliny. I was like, well, this is the second best, I guess. And I was like, oh, this is actually a really good fucking beer. It was insane because the yeah, Pliny was gone, but you could get a blind pig. Yeah. And we were like, like a Bevmo in California. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll get this. This is from Russian River. Nice. That's awesome. Right. Oh, weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great beer. Uh, I got to try it at a brewery in um, uh, California, Tustin, Tustin Brewery. Not a big brewery, but uh, Ron from Ska, he's uh, the rep out here. He's okay. really awesome, really well known in the beer world. Always wearing, you know, like Ska, like his his fedora and like, you know, <laughs> I don't, he's a really cool guy, but he knew all the people there. So he's like, while you're out there, go try it. And the beer was pretty good, but they had Blind Pig on tap. So I was like, all right, now I got to try that. <laughs> Next stop. <laughs> We actually, so I don't know if you guys want to get into the news that's going on right now. So we talked kind of a little bit about founders earlier uh-huh. and, and some of that stuff, but they actually, Stone's done this before, last previous years, and, and so founders did it this year. Uh, yeah, brands were in a stone. It's funny, we look around the table and we're all wearing bre- like brewery <laughs> or beer, beer related, <laughs> which is really funny. So, but Stone's done it, founders did it this year, and Stone's done it at this year as well. Um, and who else is on that list? Uh, New Belgian, Dogfish. I mean, all, they release kind of a calendar of beers, mm-hmm. like what they're going to be for that year. And, you know, I, I usually see them, I look at them real quick and I kind of forget about them for the rest of the year. I usually don't go back and, and, and check those things. Is mm-hmm. that something that you use, Corey, as, as, as it, a bar uh, manager? Or? It, it's, it's a mixed bag when you're using those because when brewing beer, it's not ever going to be perfect. You're never going to, it's hard to hit deadlines and it's hard to be on schedule. And a lot of times beers get pushed back for, you know, certain whatever reason you know uh so it's cool to have like a kind of a guide when you know what's coming out especially like i'm doing a new program here where i'm starting to do a featured brewery of the month Mm. so you can kind of plan around that a little bit and except for if the beer doesn't come out and you plan that event it kind (laughs) of sucks but um but you know different things where you know you know when the cool beers are coming out too like uh you know when um I don't know, all the big barrel aged beers are set to release and those are my favorites. So of course. it's it's good to know so that you can be at the store when, when it's coming out, you know. But a, a lot a lot of a lot of craft the bigger craft breweries, they all do a kind of a right. portfolio calendar yeah, so planned Bo- beers. Boulevard so. did one I saw the other day. Actually I released right. Boulevard. Great right. Divide does one Great with Divide. their Yeti series, mm-hmm. you know, one every quarter essentially and so, I mean, do you look at them at all, Brian? I mean, do you, like, do you like take a peek at them at all? And just I, kinda... don't, I mean, like, I'm not, like, actively looking to see what beers come out. It's more of kind of just, like, there's so many beers right now that you don't really need to know what mm-hmm. beers are coming out at a certain time because mm-hmm. there's so many to drink. It's, it's, a, it's you know, right. it's it's a good problem to have a variety of beers. For and, sure. You know, like, obviously, there's always going to be your, your seasonal beers, mm-hmm. your... Your, you know, fall beers, your winter beers, you know, your midsummer beers. So it's, it's, you know, there's always going to be something different. So I don't, I wouldn't really say I go out of my way to look at see what, you know, when's KBS going to be available, right. you know, cause it's, it almost, it's always available. It seems like anymore. At this point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where we could hardly ever get it. Yeah. And the times we could get it, you were limited to one bottle per right. person or the whatever. And breakfast now, out's been like, I see stacks of it at places now. Yeah. Right. There, so. right. So it, it, I think, I think we're just in a good time where beer is becoming more available and especially here in Arizona with all the breweries that we have had come out, you know, just ton of like a new one every day. I feel like, right. I mean, what, what is some, have you tried some of the new breweries? We talked about modern times and Prairie Artists and that's been here recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else has it been? Uh, besides those two. Well, St. Archer, but we Saint recently Archer. found out that they were bought out yeah, not too long ago. St. Archer, uh, Belching Beaver just came out here right. recently. Right. Um, I think I saw that you had a Belching Beaver Nitro Stout on tap. Uh, it's not Nitro, but it's a Milk Stout. Oh, yeah. Milk Stout, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then behind that, we have uh, Phantom Bride, which is uh, a Ooh, collaboration the, they did with Deftones. The Deftones, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's actually on tap? Uh, it will be after the Milk Stout, so milk it's behind that. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody go back in the back and uh, <laughs> just, just hook that pour it out. Quick, yeah. <laughs> No, that's all. I mean, yeah, I mean, my thing, I just didn't, I mean, I don't know. I'm just wondering who the, the audience for those calendars are. I mean, most people look at them real quick, I think, and then just kind of move Forget on. Forget about and, it. Yeah. yeah. You don't really, it's not something you like are writing. I mean, people making beer magazines, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's the only yeah. one I, I mean, I would guess that some people have certain 
styles or types of beer that they do look for every year. And so that would be their favorite beers that when only comes out once, once a year, you know, it's nice to know when it comes out. Exactly. Like I know, you know, my favorite is the Oak age espresso Yeti from great divide. And I know that's always first quarter January through (laughs) March. Um, So I mean, I know it's brewed right now. It's being bottled currently and it will be available in January for three months. So that's always the one that I'm like, I actively wait for as you know, in, in regards to any other beers, you know, like I said, it's it's always kind of it's it's nice to have a variety and Great. everything. There's so many beers that there, you know, you can choose from. Yeah, yeah it's it's cool. I mean, it's cool. It's like you're peeking forward in the future and mm-hmm. kind of seeing presents that are coming later in the year. So that's kind of nice. But yeah. I, I mean, I just didn't know how much use people are really getting out of them. Besides, maybe maybe some hype, right? Uh, Hypes up some beers up for the rest of the year. There's some super craft beer nerds out yeah, there yeah. that are for sure like marking it on their calendar. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> the only thing I would um, say is that I'm really disappointed. I mean, well, I mean, it's kind of nice, but at the same time, it's disappointing to actually see some of the things are getting rented too, mm-hmm. right? Because I mean, this list, there's a bunch of beers on here that they're just not going to be doing anymore. We talked yeah. about Avery um, is getting rid of their, you know, the Mistopheles, their, their demons. Samuel, the Beast. Ugh. Oh, yeah, all those are going away. Which Czar and Kaiser. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's tough. Some good beers that they're right. getting rid of. But when you're, when you're a trailblazer, when you're trying to be like, you know, someone doing something new, you can't, you can't keep making all these beers and do something new at the same time. So that's kind of where they're going with that is right. that they're on to the next phase. Like, uh, I, f- I forget what it's called botanicals and botanicals and barrels or something right. like that. Uh, is there a new line that they're focusing on? And you have, uh, the vanilla bean stout that was fantastic, oh, that man. Was really uh, it, even at a year old, like I thought that the vanilla was going to fade a little bit, but it was still super prevalent and it was really, really good. Uh, and then they did that raspberry sour that was fantastic also. So, so there's, I mean, they're getting rid of some cool stuff, you know what I mean? But right. then we get to try new stuff, you right. know, and that's what everybody in the craft beer world's looking for is what's new and what's different, you right. know? So, right. And that's what we talked about. And that was kind of our consensus last time we talked about them. It's sad that they're going away and we like those beers, but you know, you have to be, and that's what we talked about like four peaks, four peaks were the top dog for so long that they didn't have to be creative or yeah. expand any kind of sour series or barrel agent series. Nothing. They don't do anything because they were the top person. So, yeah, it, it, I mean, it is, it's sad, but at the same mm. time, it is, it's hopeful. It's awesome that they're going to be doing these beers that you know, make room for, for other beers and be creative. For something new that you've never had. Yeah. Exactly. It's <laughs> awesome. And it's, it's funny. I, like, I don't know if I talked about it or whatever, but I, I equate craft beer to Pokemon. <laughs> because you have to catch them all kind of thing, right? And like, that's how craft beer is, right? I mean, you have to go out and find that rare bottle. And, For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, or your friend's like, oh, you've never had that? Wow. Right. How have you never had that beer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all have, un, I mean, I, I use Untapped. You use Untapped? Use Corey, you're Untapped at all? Um, I stopped doing it because uh, I don't want to keep a log of all the beer that I drink. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't need, you I don't don't need that on, uh, <laughs> right. I don't need that on something where you can see a list of how often I drink. So, <laughs> Uh, I used to. It's really cool. It's really cool. So it, it's just for just for custody issues. I don't need any right, right, I don't right, need right, any right. evidence. <laughs> so. More so, yeah. it's, like, it's like our status that we're trying to gain at Brass Tap by right. uh, you know drinking how many beers we can. You know? Right. It's one of those things where like I said, it's, it's the same that you were using some kind of tool to, to catch beers. Mm. I don't think that's how it works out. So I, I think it's funny. <laughs> it is, I, I do like that idea, and it, you know. I mean, that's what we're all, we're all trying to try everything that people think are awesome. You know what I mean? That, that I mean, like the Pliny that has all the hype around mm-hmm. it, you know, like that's why we went, went out to seek it out and went to try it, you know, went to try it, you know? Oh, anyway. sure. <laughs> so uh, what else is in the news here? Uh, oh, let's see. Brewdog. I know Brandon's a big fan of Brewdog. Yeah. Uh, they've actually been making some pretty big news evidently lately. Uh, they, so the bigger, the like, Previous, what we were around, around uh, was it Great American Beer Festival? Mm. Uh, they brought their Elvis juice. Okay, to yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> and then so the Presley estate really was really upset about that, and so they decided to circumvent that lawsuit and they changed the name to Elvis. So both the brewers now from Brewdog are named Elvis because <laughs> Elvis is not a very unique name, right? So. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, their beers are. I mean, seeing some of we've had though was it Sink the Bismarck, which was like 40, 40, 41 percent. Yeah, it was insane. It sounds awesome. I read a description the other day on that beer. It sounds amazing. I mean, <laughs> our, 
our buddy Nate, who we had our on the last show, uh, his father lives over in uh, England, somewhere, Great Britain, somewhere, and was right. able to obtain it and send it to him. And I mean, we did a bottle share, and we shared that between five people, and it, was, and it hurt. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it, it hurt, but it was good to try at least. Delicious. Yeah, but yeah, it was that was so. I mean, like they had to do that. Was it the uh, thermonuclear pe- turbo penguin or whatever it is? Where they actually they, they actually like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they take a squirrel in the space. Mm-hmm. They basically, uh, taxidermy. And then they put the bottle inside the squirrel, the whole body, and it comes out of his mouth. Yep. And it's <laughs> one of the really high. It's almost 100%. I yeah, think. It's a pretty strong oh, beer. It's yeah. a really strong beer. So there are definitely kind of some weird, funky people, anyways. And some of their names for beers are really great. Yeah. So to see them to do this is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to my collaboration with Stone that I contributed to with the Brew Dogs. Right. Uh, it's a uh, black IPA. So when that gets, it's actually brewed. It's just in transit from the nice. Berlin Brewery awaiting. Was that part of their, part of their, you could send money to them to help set up the brewery. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically like an yeah. investor and they, they had Indiegogo. an Indiegogo kind of kickstart okay. and they were trying to raise a million dollars and they actually just blew it out of the yeah. water just right. uh, to, to get the, uh, the building basically to uh, the Berlin brewery, the right. facility to get it going. And then actually, Chris and I actually both contributed to a couple different uh, collaborations. So nice. and Nate did as well, actually. Too, and Nate, so. and Nate did as well. Yeah, Definitely but uh, yeah. So one of the ones I did was uh, the collaboration they're doing did with the Brew Dogs. So yeah. nice, <laughs> a little little salty on the uh, Indiegogo. Some of the things they did, I, I don't know. I'm still really, I don't know, I'm bitter about it. So I, I, we, we won't go there from there. So I, guess, but, I have tried Chris's collaboration beer that he has, is, uh, is awaiting the pickup of, and uh, it is quite tasty, the uh, Maui right. coconut. Yeah. So yeah, was, I'm really mad that I paid, you know, for a Kickstarter type thing, uh-huh. I paid a fee to get a certain beer. And Brandon just went to the brewery and had some. So, <laughs> and you could buy it. Right. And I, he could buy it too. And he could buy it in a bottle Ugh, that he didn't so, pay. It. Yeah. So it's like, hey, everybody that supported you and got this brewery, you just literally slap in the face with fucking something that you want. So the, I, yeah, the amount I'm that salty. they brewed and that had to fulfill their orders was uh, not enough. And so they could actually bottle more and cake some. And you can actually taste it if you collaborate or contributed to that collaboration. But I uh, sneak, snuck up. Taste in. <laughs> you went to the brewery. So you went to the brewery. I was, yeah, I was out Escondido in. Or? I was out in Stone Escondido, the the gardens, a couple so weekends ago, man. and, and uh, then sent me a picture. You motherfucker, holding your holding, holding, holding my beer, holding your bottle. <laughs> <laughs> right. They they pulled the bottle out, and it's you know a huge magnum size. And I was like, um, can you just take a picture of me so I can send this to my friend Chris because he's going to be pissed that yeah, I'm holding his bottle and tasting his beer right now. <laughs> and he yeah. has to still come pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, could elect me your proxy, I guess. Well, I, I didn't realize you could do that. And, yeah. And, and <laughs> I did that for the brewery. You still so. wouldn't have it because my parents would have had to take it home with them because right. I flew out and so I didn't check any bags. But uh, yeah. well, I'm sorry. I know your parents. They're good people. <laughs> You're yeah. brought me beer. Exactly. But uh, Yeah, no, I was out in California and actually did uh, uh, in San Diego and hit a couple different breweries up for the uh, first time. Uh, uh, we talked about it a lot on the show, modern times, but actually went to one of their tasting rooms and, uh, you know, just tasting it from the source is it's always, you know, a good experience. Which and one did you go to? The uh, North park? Or? Uh, no, no, no. The one, uh, just North of the airport. Okay. The one in North park is a little crazy. They have like lampshades all on the ceiling, like covering the whole ceiling. Like it's just like the weirdest decoration. <laughs> and I asked about it. I was like, what's the deal with the lampshades? And they're like, Oh, the, they must have been like super high when they decided to decorate this building. <laughs> and it's like, like right on the, underneath the bar on the wall right there where your legs are. Uh, it's all, uh, it looks like movie VHS cassette tapes mm. cases. So it looks like stacked VHS. <laughs> yeah. The bar at the, uh, the one that I went to had all, uh, books underneath of it. Okay. So it like just stacks of books underneath. And then one of the walls, they had a mural in posted notes of a, of a monkey and a, and a mother holding the monkey. <laughs> so and a then, mural made out of post-it notes? Oh, it was, it, yeah, it was great. You could actually see the different post-it notes That's in different funny. colors and, but you stood back far enough. It, it, you know, looked like a perfect painting basically. That's and crazy. then, uh, they, 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 they had some chandeliers that were actually huge ass tumbleweeds. 
that had uh, Christmas lights strewn throughout them, <laughs> and it was part of their lighting. It, I mean, it, you know, it's just a, it's just Super a trip funky. of a place, it, <laughs> right. you know. And then uh, I was able to pick up some of their uh, Blam Blam. Oh, I'm looking forward uh, to that. IPA. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's some of that really. Uh, Dank IPA, you know, the cloudy. The super hazy. cloudy. That's yeah. a new thing that everybody's doing. Well, maybe not new, but like it's a. It's taken over. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the it's the trend right trend. now. That's mm. the word I was looking for. Don't, yeah. Don't haze yeah. me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag don't haze me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so yeah, went to Modern Times and then uh, actually was down in uh, OB, Ocean Beach, uh, and uh, they had uh, Helm Brewing. I stumbled across Helm Brewing. They had a little tap room. Um, they're, I think, out of close to Escondido or something like that as well, and uh, they just had a little tap tasting room there, and they had a Saison that was brewed with... Uh, Old, uh, not old, I keep trying to say old spice, but it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> old bay, old bay spices. <laughs> I mean, all the words are there, <laughs> but it was, uh, they actually threw old bay seasoning into the Saison and it was actually really tasty. Nice. I mean, I would imagine old bay probably tastes better than old spice. Old. No, well, I was like, right, old spice. And then old spice would probably be better than axe yeah. in a beer. So, so axe would be like the AB version of that right. beer. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is how you attract cats. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But, so yeah, I mean, yeah, and I've, I've been well. Last well, last March, we actually took uh, two marches ago. Something two like two marches ago. Jesus, it's been forever now. So we actually went to uh, a bunch of bread. We I don't know stone. when did you get engaged? Oh man, it feels like five years. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> In the speakeasy and mobile love, experiment. I love you, baby. Don't. Hi, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so we went to we went to Stone, we went to Green Flash, we went to Ballast Point, Point before they got bought out. Uh, where else? Yeah, we to places all down oh, there. Before the buyout, yeah, that was a while ago. Oh yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's like ooh, three years ago then. Yeah, two years ago. I think it was when we were thirty-four. Oh man, now you just aged us. Now we're the whole fucking. Well, movie okay, arc. well, it's like <laughs> I'm it's 24, coming up Brandon. on two years ago. <laughs> it's coming up on two years ago. Okay. Yeah, because it will be it will be thirty six in March. Okay. So, There's yeah. so much good beer in San Diego, man. It's just it's, it's just amazing. You throw a stone, and you're finding another stone, right. another yeah. stone, <laughs> throw <a> stone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did go to the Stone Liberty Mar- uh, Liberty uh, Station st- Station as well, and I actually really liked their patio area. I mean, don't get me wrong, the gardens at Liberty yeah. uh, at the Escondido, Escondido are amazing, but uh, their their patio outside of uh, the Liberty Station is really cool. Just, you know, calm and actually you sit there and just watch the planes fly over as they take off out of the airport there. And um, I was there on a freaking Monday morning and I was the only one out on the patio, <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, it's still nice. Perfect. Gorgeous weather. Yeah, right. <laughs> After I went to Slater's 50-50. <laughs> my uh, my last trip to San Diego was for my thirtieth birthday, and I that my it was all planned around beer. That was all we were planning on doing. Yep. So it's it my birthday. That's what I wanted. So <laughs> uh, I mean, we just went all over. Like I said, I went to the Tustin Brewery, but I went to the brewery, which is one of my favorite breweries, and it was amazing to Can't be tell in the there. Shirt. Yeah, you're wearing get... the shirt of the brewery. Yeah, don't be that guy. Yeah. Don't be the guy. Did, and, you wear, did you wear that shirt to the brewery? <laughs> no, I bought it there. <laughs> um, but I got to try uh, mash to so their. Oh, uh, yeah. English style barley wine, but mm. they did it with vanilla. It was oh. freaking awesome. <laughs> and uh, Melange 15, which is their oh, okay. like uh, Rocky Road type beer. It's got like walnuts and Ooh. cacao nibs and vanilla. It's bourbon barrel cacao. aged. Cacao. cacao. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it should be like ninja chopping. Cacao. <laughs> <laughs> Just awesome awesome stuff though everything barrel aged I, yeah. I just like every I, the sampler uh, the flight I had was like everything was over thirteen and a half percent was like the lowest except for sour on the rye which is like you know seven eight ish I forget <laughs> but and then uh I'm looking you know they have their their tap list where you could choose a, a flight out of and then on the back is their the preserve society member or yes. is that what it's called yeah, yeah. Uh, and said so you have mm-hmm. to be a part of it Something like that. You know what I'm talking preserve, about. Preserve, preserve, yeah. Preserve, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, are are we jamming it? Or are we uh, <laughs> making some... Uh, but uh, <laughs> So, you know, it's all the beers that you... If you're in that club, you they, and then they had chocolate rain on tap. Oh. And I'm like, oh, I was talking to the guy, and I'm like, what do I got to do to get a sample of that? Yeah, my, and, how many peas do I have to freaking suck to get a and, taster of that? And luckily, we've been peas, sit- not dicks. <laughs> we, <laughs> it's cool. We, we, uh, um, 
luckily we had been there for a little bit and talking with the bartender and, you know, I told him I was there for my birthday and I was from out of town and he's, he's like, uh, Oh, should we get He's more like, beer? Well, yeah. Where, where's our bartender? Where's our server? Where we want you to uh, he'll walk by the window. We'll wave him down. No, no, um, we'll just slip him off and <laughs> so, his attention. But I, you know, I asked him. He's like, since you're out of town, it's your birthday. I'll give you a little taste of it. And he didn't even charge me for it, so that was awesome. Like, Nineteen and a half percent barrel aged chocolate stout. It's yeah. a mouthful. It's awesome, though. <laughs> it was <laughs> so good. That's what she said. <laughs> yes, I uh, I actually purchased three bottles of the Black Tuesday nice. for the public release of it. Nice. So they're sitting at that uh, a friend's house right now. He better not be drinking. He bought himself a bottle too, so I'm pretty sure he didn't drink my bottles. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Oh, taxes, buddy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was my proxy. I, I learned from the stone fiasco here and actually <laughs> named a proxy just in case. So he picked him up for me. So that was really cool. But yeah, we, we actually had the we had, uh, he actually had a bottle of chocolate rain too. His parents live like a stone throw away from nice. the brewery, so every time he goes back and visits, he ventures over there. And I've not had the chocolate rain. We had the Black Tuesday during our start of Palooza. Right. This is, uh, but I've not that. had the. I've not. Yeah. Had so he had a, he actually had a bottle of chocolate rain previous gotcha. to this. We drank that, and this last uh, couple weekends ago, we actually did a start of Palooza up at uh, his cabin. So we all brought stouts, and that's one of the ones that he brought the, nice. the Black Tuesday. So it was phenomenal like yeah. always mm-hmm. the brewery is great i mean it's just it's funny like i actually i remember the interview with uh stone was a great cook he actually was talking about you know his friends from the brewery that were opening it up and <laughs> they were talking about what they're going to do about they're only going to put their stuff in that size bottle it was uh-huh. a 750 milliliter bottle mm-hmm. he was like you guys are crazy you shouldn't do that that's, that's a horrible idea that's never going to work <laughs> and look where we're at now yeah, they're right. looking amazing so cascades taken after them and right. basically doing the same thing that's how big uh, and when they bottle their beers it's the 300 or 750 milliliter so which they're <laughs> fantastic beer man <laughs> I love Cascades uh, last uh, strong beer fest I got to try a uh, it wasn't on tap. It was just like a bottle that they had. I was just happened to be around the right people. Mm. It was a golden raspberry sour that was just, Ooh. it was awesome. It was so good. Nice. <laughs> nice. Speaking of strong beer, are you going to be at Strong Beer Always Fest? Or are you, year, man. Are you working it. or no, uh, I'll actually be, participating? I'll be hanging out. I, I got enough connections to where I could be there, but it's definitely worth it to be the VIP ticket. Get the VIP ticket. Did you get the super VIP? No. <laughs> I work Friday nights, and I feel like the, the only thing is you get to do the beer dinner the night before or something you like get, that. Yeah, you get to go to the venue and help set up, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Pay $25 extra to go help set up the right. beer tent. Well, so, and then the fast pass thing, which means you get to cut in the line. Yeah, everybody, okay. Which, again, if I get fucking fast passed by somebody... During the VIP hour that we're there, yeah, be, well, th- be, be, be throwing some bows. So oh, dude. something cool! Like I, I know, like literally everybody behind every tent almost. We like, need to be hanging out with being, you. Uh, well, it's funny just being in this industry because everybody they sell me their beer. You know what I mean? So, and that's right. the people that they have representing them at the Strong Beer Fest. Sure. So, I get I just you know like. I'm not going to mention any names, actually. <laughs> like this long line right. for, dropper. for one of the beers. <laughs> and I just go up to the guy. I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? Yeah. What, are you, what are you pouring right now? <laughs> and he just pours me a glass of it, you know, instead of standing in the line. So nice. So it used to be at uh, when I was in Mesa, we knew a bunch of people over there. Mm-hmm. And then that's how it was. We just go to the side of the tents and they'd be like, here you go. Yeah. It was awesome. But yeah, it's got a little, a little bigger over there. Uh, yeah, it's funny. So in the last, I think the last two years uh, I've gone and you've gone as well. And mm-hmm. it's always been like, wait, you're here. I see pictures like after the fact. And there's like, so many people right. there though. Like it's crazy. It's well, crazy. We, we, we like have like a party of like five or six of us go and we split up sometimes mm-hmm. and somehow we always find each other back, but I'm trying to find people I like, know there. find anybody else. Yeah. I can never find anybody else I know there. It's like, oh, then, you were that strong beer festival? Funny. Shit. Yeah. See posts later and you're like, oh, sh- you, I was like right there. <laughs> so the line next to you get yeah. fucking beer. And shit. Yes. The, the, so, the awkward one is when you actually see yourself in the background of somebody's post. Right. That's happened to me before. I was like, holy shit, I was in the background. Of the, I was the, there. The slideshow and fucking the, after the after the fact, you're like, right. hey, that's me. Yep. The slideshow. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Right. Well, I mean, should we stop and uh, pause and get a beer? They're all pretty much empty. Sure. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do that. Back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, welcome back to uh, the, the podcast. Uh, Jeez, everybody man. got their uh, glasses refilled, so uh, we're Brandon, not parched anymore. Yeah, right. Brandon, what are you drinking? I am drinking the Adam Smasher, which is an oak-aged Marzen, 
ale from Two Brothers, which is kind of a local brewery out of Scottsdale, Arizona. All right, they have one there, yeah. Yep. I think they're actually back east, though, right? Like, I think Chicago is where they started region- yeah. originally, and then right. they opened up a brewery out here in it's Scottsdale. Awesome. Which is awesome. That's, yeah. that's great to have them So here. they're kind of local. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> back to kind of local. local. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's an oak-aged Marzen, you know, Oktoberfest-style beer. Uh, really tasty. Um, you know, I... Don't know if it's the glass that I'm drinking that out of, but it kind of has a lemon or a limey smell to it. So that might just be the glass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is a very smooth uh, Oktoberfest, not the uh, lingering uh, taste to it. So uh, I'd probably give it about a, a three five on the untapped. Nice. Probably what you got, uh, what you got over there? Death by Coconut. It's actually the first time I got to try this. Uh, it is a uh, s- sweet porter, I believe, that they put a bunch of coconut and uh, cacao nibs. Is that a word again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the cacao. <laughs> uh, uh, seasonal release from Oscar Blues that they do. Um, they add a ton of dark chocolate malt and uh, extra dark caramel malt, so you get a lot of caramel and co- almost not coffee, but just the dark roasty and, and chocolate and it's, it's almost big like, on the coconut. I got the same thing. So it, it almost has like this weird soury kind of tinge to it up front. Almost. And then you definitely get a coconut really just, it's, it's, huge, it's like, death by coconut for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's the biggest coconut flavored beer I've ever had. Not that I drink, have drank it's, a lot, but. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Like it's, it's not to the point of where, I, I, because uh, I don't know if you've had coconut Joe from Papago. Uh, I, th- I, d- I have, yes. It seems kind of like on that level where it's like almost to the point where I'm drinking suntan lotion. It almost feels like that, <laughs> yeah. but not, not to that point yet. So it's, it's, it's good. I like it. I mean, I'm not a huge coconut fan, but mm. it's definitely a tasty beer. Yeah, it's good. Um, so we actually, before we, we left, we actually talked about, was it, uh, Brewdog. There actually did some other crazy stuff recently <laughs> and it got, got kind of canceled, but I wanted to touch on it and talk to you guys about it a little bit. They actually wanted to open up a, a, a brew pub in Ohio. So they went online and asked people for money to actually do that. And when they do it, they become stakeholders in the company. Mm. And then they're going to take that money and they're going to bet it on a color in Vegas. On a uh, roulette? On a roulette. <laughs> <laughs> so, evidently, that got put on hold. The rest of the shareholders in the company didn't really like that idea. The one big bet, they would bet the whole company. <laughs> well, and then it crosses over into different laws about, you know, different states have different right. gambling laws and things like that. So, they would be in... It's- you know, really weird area legally. So. More, more legal trouble. <laughs> yeah, than, <right>? exactly. <laughs> so. so, yeah, I don't know how, how I would feel about that if I gave them my money and they went, I mean, as a gambling person, I don't know, like I probably wouldn't be too much against it, but <laughs> it's just kind of, it's kind of crazy to go take that whole investment and just put it on red or black. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're going to have you bet if you, if you actually were the stakeholder uh, for the Ohio one, that you were allowed to go online and actually choose, I think, I don't know if it's vote a color. Vote for your color. Yeah, yeah vote for your color. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, ooh, that's tempting. But at the same time, I don't know. That seems kind of uh, like you said. Oh, that's tough, man. So I don't know. Just to lose all that money just right off the bat. <laughs> all right, no brewery. <laughs> guess, we're going, guess we're going back overseas, guys. It's cool. As long as we can get their beer here at a more frequent, you know, right? Yeah, right. That would be nice. Right, right. <laughs> Well, it's kind of cool. It was like a, another overseas with McKellar actually opened up a place in, in California. Recently. San Francisco, right? Yeah, San Francisco, yeah. Does he have his own brewery? I thought he was like a gypsy brewer. He, he was, and they actually opened a place in, in California recently. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. So they've been posting a lot of things on Instagram from, from California and their new place. Some and, cool beer coming from that guy, man. Like, you know, and I think he's just kind of the same spirit that like we talked about earlier, Dogfish, is that mm-hmm. it's the... He's not afraid to try beers. He's trying uh, or styles or mm. different combinations and do things. It's it's definitely one of those guys. That's, he, he does weird beers, mm. and if people like it, cool. If people don't like it, that's cool too. He just make, wants to make beer. So it's a, it's good to have them out here. I love. I mean, their beer geek breakfast. Like yeah, all the, oh, the, so good. The, the they had a smoked one that was like bake, you know, a bacon. Yeah, oh, that was amazing too. Yeah, Gypsy Brewer. That was a weird concept. You just go around to different breweries and do basically like a collab with all the different breweries. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think as a brewer, it's one of like the fun parts about doing it, right? I mean, he kind of takes the best part of being a beer brewer and then just that's well, what yeah, he, he doesn't have to have an actual place. He doesn't have to have any equipment. He just goes around and uses everybody else's, but right. I mean, he's making cool beers. So yeah, more power to him at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Sorry, don't mind me, guys. I'm just Instagramming over here. Got to got to document our uh, record sessions. So. Are you are you, uh, are you videotaping the? I'm video? not videotaping. No, we are not uh, a video show yet. So yet. currently, we're not a video show yet. 
If anybody'd like to send us some GoPros, though, maybe. <laughs> we test them out for you. We test them out like a hardcore. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. Check us out on the Instagrams at the Hoppy Crossman. Not at the Hoppy Crossman. At Hoppy Crossman. Yes. No the in there. There's no the. <laughs> if you want to put the in all the time, just got to get ready. <laughs> Craftsmen is plural. Craftsmen. Hoppy Craftsmen. <laughs> on the Instagrams. <laughs> and <laughs> Facebooks. And Facebooks. <laughs> Ooh, we're not on the Twitter though. We don't tweet. We don't tweet. No, yeah, sorry guys. Kind of. I, I feel like Twitter. I mean, I know people a lot of people use it, and now that Trump's using it even more, I feel like it's even <laughs> dying more than it's going to. Be. So, yeah. you know, whatever. It's cool, but uh, yeah, we don't Twitter at all. Uh, Facebook's all I do personally. Yeah, yeah, so. Facebook. I mean, Facebook. I mean, at this point, um, I even mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of feels like it's dying. Yeah. Like, I feel like everybody's going to Instagram or Snapchat kind yeah. of thing. So whatever. But. The uh, other thing I want to bring up was, uh, according to Giraffe Magazine and some stats from, was it, uh, who is it? I'm thinking of the, the Brewers Association. We're actually at 5,000 plus breweries. And probably more than that, 5,005 is actually what the, the article says. Uh, and I'm sure at this point, and this is a, kind of an older article, uh, December 12th. It's not too bad, but I'm sure we're probably past that at this point. We're probably, oh, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's December, pretty December 12th, so two, a few more have opened since yesterday. Right, yes. <laughs> yes, you are 100% correct. <laughs> That's how this works, man. It's insane <laughs> the just, amount of craft breweries that are open in the U.S. It's just, just in Arizona, too. There, I feel like there's at least one or two every month that a mm-hmm. new brewery that's opening. Yeah, we talked about a few of them uh, over in our area, at least. And we talked about Oro Brewing uh, open up there. 12 West, which is actually over in Santan. Mm-hmm. Kind of uh, the... Still ju- not been yet. Haven't been there. I've had some friends have been there. I've, I've had their beers, which is uh, was really good. Good stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, I think we're over 90 now in Arizona. Oh, I think it's more than that. Is it more than that? I think so, yeah. Uh, I don't know for sure. It's um, I think it's over 100 at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's, yeah. Your, what's your favorite Arizona beer then? Oh, it's t- beer? See, it's beer or brewery, yeah. right? That's the <laughs> uh, single okay, brew. Uh, what, what's your favorite child? That's a yeah. thing too. You only have one, so <laughs> hey, might not be your favorite. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. sorry, Stone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my uh, my personal favorites, as far as you know, beers that I, I mean, I love Arizona Wilderness. Don't get me wrong, um, but because um, they're but they're always doing like different things every week so it's not like a set like draft list that they have so um, my personal favorites are dragoons ipa it's fantastic and then uh mother road tower station mother road tower station is really good and you know it's funny we talked about i love their cans too uh, mm-hmm. yeah the, oh the open, open mic cans yeah. oh they're fan that's awesome how is not everybody doing that yet like, <laughs> i don't know it's it's <laughs> a phenomenal it's like the best thing it's ever in the world. So you get the nose and everything off mm-hmm. of the beer still while you're drinking out of the can it's just the, the whole top comes off like mm-hmm. that yeah, yeah. mini keg, man. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 For I, those of you not familiar, like like uh, Corey said, it, the whole top comes off, not just a pop top, but the yeah, whole top like opens a, up. It's like a top of a tuna can, but yeah. the whole top of the beer comes off, and you get you get all the nose and aromas and everything that you're supposed to get out of a beer when you're drinking it. Like, it's fantastic. I think uh, my catch was the first one I saw doing mm-hmm. those cans, um, and then Mother Road. Or Tower State, sorry, no Mother Road, Mother Road, yeah, uh, with their Tower Station, but I don't really know anybody else that's doing it right now. So yeah, there's, I saw a third person. I can't remember what their name of that brewery is. It's it's not in Arizona, but they actually do it as well. Mm. And it's it's, but yeah, it's amazing. It's one of those things where, like you said, how is everybody not doing this yet? They need to convert their canning lines. I mean, Oscar Blues, you think would be like one of the people who would just yeah, get for on sure, on, right, right. Yeah, I mean, them being a big canning company, that's that's. But yeah, they, I really think they should do it. <laughs> How do you feel about cans? Like the whole everybody's getting into cans. Oh, we had a bottles. discussion about this on a previous episode, you actually. Right? You oh, know, yeah. canning versus bottling. You know, I think it. You know, the canning makes sense because it is a lot more sustainable mm. for a lot of craft breweries. It's you know, hundred percent recyclable uh, as opposed to you know bottles that you right. can you can. Uh, Recycle a can and reuse it within 60 days, mm. basically, of, of bottling it and can, or canning it and, and, you know, distribution and everything. Go through the whole process, you know, have that can back basically to you in 60 days, whereas opposed to a bottle, you know, you got to clean that shit. And, and right. you know, I think it's just it's 
you know, let's get more breweries are going the way of it because it's a it's a lot more feasible for them to go that way. Right. Well, I, I also like it because you don't get any light into the beer also, so it doesn't affect the beer at all. So you don't get that skunky kind of... Yeah, you avoid some of the the common things that people do when they mishandle beer, yeah, mild exactly. handle beer. So, but yeah, I mean that's it's that's what we talk about. It's you know, cans is the freshest you're gonna get compared mm-hmm. to being a keg. You're gonna get a can. That's gonna be the best. Get a can, pour it to a glass. It's gonna be the freshest beer. Because that's a can. So right? uh, you saw Dogfish is gonna start canning all their all their beers now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was you know I was talking to him and he said that um, the reason that he hasn't done it before now is because um you know when you bottle a beer you you cap on foam so that there's no there's no air you know oxygen in the beer so you don't get oxygen uh, uh what's the word oxidation like, there you go <laughs> <laughs> um and there wasn't any canning lines that did that that capped okay. on foam so he spent three years looking for a canning line and that's they you know they found it now so that's why they're doing it now so <laughs> you're gonna get uh you know more uh, uh quality beer out of it with you know with the capping on foam you know so that makes yeah that makes more sense I mean, it really does it's just one of those things where I mean, I don't know if I, I want to say canning's cheaper too. To actually, if somebody wants to get into actually, I would think so. Yeah, canning or bottling. I think canning actually is cheaper to do. So mm-hmm. it, it just makes sense all around to do. I mean, you know, the, the quality of the beer, you know, the freaking recycle usability of the freaking cans. It, no, you know, right? It makes it makes way more sense to do that for me. So yeah, we, we're we're big fans of it. You know, and, and the usability of it too. We can take it to the pool, we can take it to the beach, you can take it to the mm. river. We do all those things with cans, but you can't do it with bottles. For sure, yeah, so, exactly. I'd love to be able to go to like, yeah, and that's what you know. Founders actually is making a lot of their beers actually mm. available in fifteen packs now too, which that's why I love. I mean, fifteen, you know, 15, 15 pack, pack. Of all, all day. I mean, you know, that's pretty that's, awesome. It's yeah. hard to pass that up for that for price sure. for the price exactly. That's, right. that's like my. Every, you know, for everybody else's Bud Light, that's my Bud Light, you know, mm-hmm. that I go to, you know, right. so yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's good beer, fairly cheap. We actually, when we were out in San Diego a couple weekends ago, we actually went to a Chargers game. And uh, so we went to the store to get some beer for tailgating before the game. And uh, Modern Times, it always seems to go back to Modern Times, man. Yeah, I mean, they're just doing everything right. <laughs> man, they got cans too, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, they had a, a variety pack of uh, cans and they actually had a 10 pack of their cans. Uh, which was weird to see uh-huh. 10, you yeah. know, they had five different beers to each, but a 10 pack. So, you know, but it worked out. It was perfect, you know, a variety. So everybody got a little bit of a different taste. Uh, they had their, uh, Saison's, one of their Saison's an IPA, uh, their, their, uh, uh, coffee stout and then like a, a red rye IPA, which was pretty cool. Nice. Um, I don't remember what the fifth one was, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, like cans are everywhere and they're, they're so just, User friendly, basically, yep. right? Yeah, Founders is doing their uh, was it? Well, I was going to say Azakaka, but I'm just right, right? Was <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 so yeah, they're the Azaka, right? Yeah, and then I think something so. like that, right? and yeah. then the Mosaic as well. They're going to be putting the Mosaic Promise. They're going to put in the cans, mm-hmm. the 15 packs. So. Mosaic's really good. Oh, I love that single beer. hop, all Mosaic hops, just just really good. Well, yeah, Founders and Bells. I mean, for Michigan, so it's hard not to like some of the Michigan breweries. So much, but gotta have the soft spot. Good beer, man. Yeah, like, like, you can't really hate him. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess uh, at this point we practically went it down. Uh, at this point, court, is there anything you want to plug? Are you think coming up at the uh, Nello Mushroom here? Oh, uh, yeah. Like I was, I mentioned kind of earlier that we're starting a new program to where we're featuring a brewery of the month, and um, that's a uh, kind of cool thing that we're doing. So, uh, they'll bre- we'll put on like you know, three or four different beers from that brewery all month long. And then two, two events, uh, you know, with have a rep here passing out swag and things like that. And, uh, we'll put swag, on man. some cool beers from them. Like, uh, the first one we did was in November or no, uh, September, no, October. Sorry. Oh man. Oh, wow. man. October Let's was the first back. one. October was the first one and we did stone. Okay. And, uh, they had just had their 20th anniversary. So they did their encore series and they had their, fifth their 10th their 15th anniversary beers mm-hmm. and it's their 20th anniversary so we had that one also but we had all that on tap and it was mm-hmm. you know only like maybe five packs of those cakes came into arizona so right. something like wow. you know super exclusive type beers mm-hmm. so um that's kind of what we're trying to do around that have a cool event at the end of the month to 
have those super, you know, low ba- low batch beers that you can't really get anywhere else. So, so yeah, so um, you said Stone. You guys did last month with Goose Island. Goose Island because Bourbon County comes out on Black Friday, so right. we did a lot of beers with that. We still have bottles of uh, the Lolita, mm-hmm. uh, the Bombers. Um, we had barley wine and we had the stout on tap. And I think you still have the barley wine on tap, too. Uh, possibly. I guess yeah. on the list there. And then um, Madame Rose also. Okay. Uh, old brew in barrel aged with cherries. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but what's coming up, though, uh, this month is Oscar Blues. We're doing a tap takeover tomorrow, actually. Um, and we're going to have on Death by Coconut, Hot Box. Uh, we got cans of. Barrel Age 1050 we're going to release tomorrow. So That's very good stuff. I've had a can of that. 19.2 ounce cans. They're big cans. So, Stove pipes, baby. Uh, so oh, I'm delicious. excited to try that out. Um, I like uh, the, hot, the, the, the hot box one. That was really good, too. The hot box. Yeah, yeah. coffee porter. Just, yeah. just a solid, just solid dark coffee beer, you know. Yeah. And then uh, January, um, Deschutes will be releasing their Abyss variants again. Yep. And they're doing... Um, a scotch and brandy uh, um, variants on the abyss, so aged in scotch and brandy barrels. Uh, mm-hmm. And then before that was uh, cognac and rye. Right. Uh, so we still have some some bottles of that that I've been sitting on waiting for this event. So in in January we'll be doing all four of the variants, and we'll have abyss on tap as well. Uh, yes. So that'll be fun. Um, February we're doing Sierra Nevada. Um, not really sure what I'm going to have on yet. It's too far out in the future. And then um, doing um, in March, we're going to do like all California beer. Okay. Um, so, well, I mean, it's good. You have a bunch of stuff kind of in the pipeline to actually exactly. come up through. So. It, it gives me enough time to like get beers that I could sit on and have a cool event. You know, so right now I already have for March, I have a couple things from uh, Hangar 24. Hmm. I have a, a, a sour orange wheat Ooh, that wow. like, only five kegs came in Arizona, so I'm hanging on to that for that event. Perfect. And then Pukachev's Cobra is coming out. Like I think it's out now on shelves. So that's really good I have stuff. a keg of that as well. And then some cool things from other breweries, like we're gonna do Stone and uh, maybe Modern Times. I haven't really set a lineup yet. Ballast Point for sure, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll have two handles on for each of those breweries all month long, and then do a cool event at the end of the month with that. And that I think will be a, just a fun party. Like <laughs> yeah, right. that'd be really good. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So, uh, Corey, we I mean, we talked about earlier, you can get, uh, people can, you, you post on there's the Arizona craft beer lovers. Mm-hmm. Is there any place, place else that people can actually like see uh, what's follow happening us, here? Uh, f- uh, Mellow Mushroom Aotuki on Facebook. Uh, and then, I mean, I think that's about it. Honestly, uh, you could always look us up on tap hunter though. Tap hunter is awesome. Mm-hmm. See what hunter. we have on tap all the time. We keep that pretty up to date, so yeah. I mean, I um, think when I go to a new city or a new place, that's one of the first things I pull up is tap hunters. Yeah, what's, what's what's around me, what people are actually doing on tap. So it's really, sure. it's really nice to have that kind of instant kind of hey, this is what everybody has, and this was actually you know pouring everywhere. You so. plan, yeah, plan your night out based on where you're going to go, what beer you want to drink. It's awesome. Like, <laughs> it is <laughs> a cool, cool app. Good stuff. So, uh, and then for us, Brandon, where we can build book. Uh, Look us up at it. Well, like I said, uh, I was just uh, finishing up an Instagram. So we are on the Instagrams, the Hoppy Craftsman on there, not the. <laughs> the <laughs> I keep wanting to say the Hoppy Craftsman. We are the Hoppy Craftsman, but it is just at Hoppy Craftsman. Uh, we're on Facebook as well. Um, we'll uh, put links to all of our accounts onto the WordPress uh, site that we have where we host all our uh, blogs through. Um, we're at uh, hobbycraftsman.wordpress.com. There it is. There it is. Um, we are hobbycraftsman at gmail.com. If you want to send us any uh, emails or uh, you know comments, concerns, you know, and I was actually thinking the other day, I think we should we should uh, have a voicemail so people want to call in and leave a voicemail and ask us questions or uh, yeah. other things. We should do that as well. We could set up a Skype account. You know, if people wanted to Skype into the show. Oh, good lord! <laughs> now we're crazy. I mean, we're going to get fancy here. Uh, <laughs> but we also do. Uh, we are hosted through uh, iTunes. Uh, we are the Hoppy Craftsman on hi- iTunes. I believe you set up a uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, and a uh, Stitcher, Stitcher as well. So. Yeah. What are those? Just the Hoppy Craftsman? Yep, same thing. Hoppy Craftsman, such as them in there, and you'll be able to find uh, on Stitcher, uh, the Hoppy Craftsman, and then uh, SoundCloud as well. I tried to get on uh, Spotify, but you can't actually get on Spotify. They have to come find you first. Right. So, unless we get to 300,000 people following us a month, mm. anybody, <laughs> please do. Uh, yeah, they won't, they won't come looking for a us. A month. So. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. But we are also on the Instagrams, uh, myself, BeRich8, and Chris. SC Sandback. There you go. 
Um, you know, we're on Facebook as well and uh, Untapped. Yeah. Untapped. Untapped. I am B Rich Aid on Untapped as well. And same thing. With me. <laughs> <laughs> we try to keep it simple. <laughs> Super original, guys. That's how it works. Yeah. But uh, we're out there. I mean, we need to get our uh, actual Hoppa Craftsman uh, untapped going here so we can uh, check in all these beers and rate them as well you know we try to start rating these beers as we talk about them and uh, uh during the shows as well so you can uh, kind of understand where we rate these beers as opposed to just drinking them on the show right yeah so um well i mean i guess uh, we should probably thank Corey for being on the guest on our show thank you for being here yeah thank you Mel mushroom in. yeah th- yeah thank you guys for coming man this was really fun i appreciate it Absolutely. love talking beer man yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it all day long <laughs> yeah and then, you know when people ask when i tell people i do a podcast or they find out i do a podcast that's one of the things i say it's like i do a podcast about beer and talk about it and then drink beer so <laughs> you can't really go wrong with any right. of those things so yeah. no. really enjoy it <laughs> really like having here so uh, who else do we think? We got uh, Oscar Blues. Thanks for being the brewery of the month right, this month, yeah. right? For you guys, that's awesome. This yep. beer's delicious. Just, just thank you, craft beer in general, for right. being there, for letting us drink you, for everybody you know contributing to it, and five thousand breweries growing and strong and Everyone's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. But so. uh, yeah, uh, I'm Brandon. I'm Chris. Thank and you. I'm Corey. Thanks, guys.